Today we are talking about linear and quadratic systems and inequalities, lesson number five. We're going to be solving inequalities in two variables using technology. But before we tackle the quadratic inequalities, we're going to talk about graphing linear inequalities using a graphing calculator. Now we can use this following procedure, but I want you to think about graphing a linear equation using a graphing calculator. We should be very familiar with using a graphing calculator to graph a linear equation. And once we understand the linear equation, there's just a couple of extra steps that we can use to graph a linear inequality. So if we need to, we're going to rearrange the inequality by isolating y to the left side so that the equation of the boundary line is in this form, y equals mx plus b. Now here we're using this form because we're talking about a linear equation or a linear inequality. So if we have to, we're going to take all the terms equaling one side here and we're going to try and make it y equals mx plus b and put it in that form. Then we go to our graph and calculator, start at y1, and input that boundary line equation that we found in step one here into y1. Then to the left of y1, we're going to select the shading which corresponds to inequality symbol by using, pressing the enter key, and we keep doing pressing the enter key until the desired symbol appears. There's going to be some different options that we can use. Now here, if we use the y, if we're looking at y is greater than or equal to mx plus b, or y is greater than mx plus b, then we're going to use this symbol here where you can see that you have an upper triangle, shaded upper triangle to the left of that y1. If the y is less than or equal to mx plus b, or y is less than mx plus b, then we're going to be using the lower version of that triangle, the shaded triangle is pointing towards the bottom here, this y1. So you can see the shaded part is underneath. And then we press the graph key, just like we would in a linear equation. Now I'm going to show you how to do that with a graphing calculator. I have my graphing calculator here in the y equals mode. I can get to that so you have your normal screen. Just press y equals and you have this screen here. You can notice on the left here you have this line right here and then y1. And so if we were to graph thing, something like x plus 1, we would put x plus 1 in here and then graph it. So that looks familiar. Uh, if we need to make a standard zoom, we press zoom 6, and that would be the standard zoom window of negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. So you have this, this nice square looking graph. Here is an x plus 1 line and you can see there's a line there. Now if we were to can go back to our y equals and then move over to the left side so I press the left arrow key a couple of times so now I'm on this now you have a blinking cursor here on that line if you press enter it'll change to different options. Here you have a solid line let's see what that looks like if we graph that you have a now a thicker line a thicker solid line here but if I move over to this and now I have this here where you have a shaded region that's on the top a shade shaded is on the top so when we press that we can see that we have the line and everything above the line is going to be shaded if we return back here and change it and press enter again we have this shaded part that's on the bottom when we graph that we can see we have still have that same boundary line but the shaded part is on the bottom. So again, if we return here, we can say this is shaded. And as you toggle through, there's these different options. You have your normal line, your normal line, you have your thick line, you have your top shade, your bottom shade, and here is following this cursor and then you have a disappearing cursor, you have a dotted line, and so on. So this option, when you're taking a look at your equation, you have to decide whether you're going to be using this top shade or this bottom shade. Now how you can determine which one to use is you gotta look at your equation and see, is it greater than? If it's greater than, you're gonna be using the top shade. If, it, if the y is less than, you're gonna be using the bottom shade. Now one thing that we should keep in mind is that when we're taking a look at the graph and calculator, it doesn't distinguish between just less than or less than or equal to or 
greater, just greater than or greater than or equal to. So it doesn't make a broken or solid boundary line as you wish. So you have to keep that in mind. If you're sketching a graph from the graphing calculator and you have to put it on a piece of paper, then you have to just make sure that you take a look at the equation and see if it's just less than, then it would become a broken line. If it's greater, less than or equal to, then it would become a solid line. On your graphing calculator, it, it won't distinguish between the two, so it'll just have the, the solid line. So let's use then this inequality of x minus y greater than 3 to illustrate how to shade or draw or graph this inequality using a graphing calculator. So step one, we've got to rearrange the inequality. In this form, x minus y greater than 3, we don't have it in a form that we can put into our graphing calculator. Our graphing calculator requires that it be in the form of y equals. And so we have to rearrange this so that this is a y and then the inequality sign with the rest of the terms here. So I subtract an x here, subtract an x, and we have a negative x plus 3. And there's a negative y. Negative y is greater than negative x plus 3. Then I'm going to divide by a negative 1 or multiply by a negative 1. And when we do that, remember, one of the rules about inequalities, if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative 1, you must switch the inequality. So we have a greater than symbol here, but because we're multiplying by a negative 1, this inequality sign becomes a, the opposite. So y is less than x minus 3. 3. Now, the way I like to do it though is when I have this negative y is greater than negative x plus 3, I'm going to bring the y to the other side. So it's going to be 0 then. And then your y then is going to become less than x minus 3. So you see that this ends up being the same here, but we have a y is less than x minus 3, but I notice that I didn't have to switch the inequality. The inequality sign stayed the same, and I used my addition and subtraction to solve for this, isolate this y. So now we have it. So y1 is equal or so equal to x minus 3, and that is the boundary line that I'm going to graph. I'm going to input that boundary line equation, y equals x minus 3, into y1, and we have it here, and here I'm going to actually do it right on we have x minus 3, x minus 3, and now I'm going to toggle through and take a look at my sign here. This is y less than, so I'm going to use the bottom shade here, but I'm going to toggle through, even though it was there already. So I have a top shade, and now it's the bottom shade, which is going to shade underneath this line. And so now that I have it there, I'm going to press Enter. Oh, it, now it's there, it's toggled there, and now I'm going to press graph, and I can see here is the line y equals x minus 3, there's the line, and it's shading all the bottom. Now if I need to, I could press zoom 6 to get the standard zoom of x values from negative 10 to 10, y values from negative 10 to 10, but we have our graph. Now we can use this to sketch our graph on a piece of paper. And so you can see here, this is what it looks like, and you can see that this corresponds with what we had at the top here. So I'm just going to put it over there. You can see that this matches that. Okay, our final step, or one of the important steps that we have to realize is that when we look at our graph and calculator and we try and sketch it on a piece of paper, it hasn't distinguished whether or not that boundary line is a solid line or a broken dashed line. We need to look back at our equation. So when we look back at, at our equation, we notice that this y was less than and only less than x minus 3, which means that the boundary line must be a dashed line. So the graph calculator can't show that, but we can show that in our, on our piece of paper. We can make that a dashed line to show that the boundary line is not included in the solution. The next thing then is to graph a quadratic inequality using a graphing calculator. Well, we can use a similar procedure. We've already graphed quadratic equations using a graphing calculator. The only thing that we have to change then is 
change the option just left of the Y1 to toggle through until we get either top shade or bottom shade. Remember that if it's a top shade, we are graphing Y is greater than or greater than or equal to this quadratic expression. And if it's the bottom shade, then it will be less than or less than or equal to that quadratic expression. All right, let's take a look at example one. And now we're going to take a look at a linear example. We also have, in this case, we have a quadratic example. So let's graph the solution region on a graphing calculator. We'll try and sketch that solution region on the graph that's provided here in front of us. So here we have a 2x plus 3y minus 12 is less than 0. Now remember that our graphing calculator only has this option of it needs a y1 equals. So we're going to have to rearrange this into a y equals format. So I'm going to just move this to this side here and say, okay, well, we're going to have to isolate this 3y. So we're going to subtract 2x from each side. We have 3y minus 12 is going to be less than negative 2x. And then add 12 to both sides. We have add 12 to both sides, add 12. And we get 3y is less than negative 2x plus 12. And finally, to isolate y, to make it just one y, we're going to divide by 3. So we have y is less than negative 2 over 3x plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. So now we have our y1. Our y1 is going to be less than negative 2 over 3x plus 4. All right, so now that we have this, we're going to place this in our graphing calculator and find out what it looks like. So here's my graphing calculator. I'm going to go to my y equals, clear what's there, and put in negative 2 divided by 3 times x. Let's actually try this again. Negative 2 divided by 3, two, negative 2 thirds times x, and then plus 4. Now I'm going to move over to the left of my y1 and toggle through until I get the correct shade. Remember that when I had this y is less than, so this shade has to be on the bottom. So toggle through, and now the shading is on the bottom. And now I'm going to graph it, and here it looks. There is my boundary line. And this is the shade. Now taking a look at the original question, we have to see, is this going to be a dashed line or a solid line? It's going to be a dashed line because it doesn't have this extra equals bar. So when we draw this, then we're going to have this, I need a straight edge here. We're going to draw this, and this is going to be something like so. And it's going to be a dashed line, like that. And this is going to be all shaded. So I'm going to use my highlighter here to shade all of these. And so all of that is the shaded region. This is the solution region. We can also put a test point here. So if we just use our origin as a test point, we say 0, 0. So here 0 is less than 0 times negative 2 thirds plus 4. 0 is less than 4. Is 0 less than 4? Yes, that is true. So that means that this part, this 0, 0, is in the solution region. So we've checked it out, but there it is. We've shaded it correctly, and you can see it from our um, graphing calculator that it's the same. All right, let's take a look at part B. We have a quadratic equation here, and we have to check, is it in a form where we can say y1 equals? Yes, the y is already isolated for us. If it wasn't isolated, or if there was a coefficient that was other than one, we would have to rearrange it so that it was one y. So we can say then y1 is in a sense equal to 2x squared minus x minus 15. This will give us the boundary line 
And then once we have the boundary line, we can shade either the top or the bottom. Taking a look at this inequality sign, we have greater than. So that means that above this curve is going to be where we are shading. So going back to our graphing calculator, we're going to go back to y1. Let's clear that. Now we have our 2x squared minus x minus 15. We have our quadratic expression now in our y1, y1 equals, that's going to be our boundary. And if we just graphed it, we would have this parabola looking line. But we want to be able to shade so that we can see the region. So when we go back to our y1, we're going to go left of the y1. Right here, I'm going to toggle through until we get the right shading. Now looking back at the inequality, once we rearranged and isolated for y, y was greater than and so therefore we're going to use a top shade. So we're going to toggle the enter until we get the top shade. And then once the top shade is blinking there, then we can graph it. And now we can see that this is all filled. Now I'm going to actually, it's missing the bottom here. So I'm going to just change the window a little bit. And to add the bottom, I'm going to make this Uh, maybe the y minimum to be negative 18 so that we can see it a little bit better. Uh, there it is. So now we can see that a little bit better. So here from this point, it's going up this way and up this way. And there we can see it kind of looks like that. This is going to be the shade. I'm going to use this um, here. Now, I was a little quick to, to shade it in. Actually, I was a little quick to draw the line. I drew it solid here without actually checking. But when I take a look at this inequality, the extra bar is on the bottom here. So that's y is greater than or equal to, which tells us, because it's also equal to, that this is going to be a solid line. So I got lucky there. This is going to be a solid line, and this is a solution region. Now, what I can do, though, here, the origin is not on the line, so let's use that as a test point. Let's see if 0, 0 satisfies this condition. So here, if y was equal to 0, we're going to test this, test to see if this y is greater than this expression. Well, 2, if x is 0, 2 times 0 squared is 0 minus x, which is 0, 0, is negative 15. Is 0 greater than 15? Negative, sorry, negative 15. 0 is greater than negative 15, so 0, 0 is in the solution region, region, which means that this is the correct shading for that inequality. Okay, you can make your attempt at the assignment, and I will see you in class.